church is so thrilling to sinners the, to know to be able to know God to be numbered amongst his children to be accepted in the beloved Christ is the greatest thrill the greatest gift but so is our view of the human being in this Western, falling Western, secular world we live in, we have such a reduced view of humanity. No one is taken by the human being anymore, especially by children. We've lost uh, our love for the human being. And you've spoken also in your teaching about the future of the human mind about the deification of the human person, which it seems takes a, a vision for humanity to such heights of glory by the mercy of God. I'm wondering if you could say a few things about the future of our minds. What's, what's coming for, for the believer? Once again, <laughs> speaking from uh, our fathers in God, rather than any experience, uh, but it is an important point. Our temptation often is to say, well, we're, we're at this low level. We won't worry about the high things, the great things, but our high calling is what gives us orientation. Um, again, St. Mark tells us to journey without direction is wasted effort. We need to know where we're going, however distant and uh, afar it is. Um, and in any case, for us, incorporated into the church, however distant it, 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 distant it is in um, our kind of existential, experiential reality, it is there as a pledge. We have received through baptism, through chrismation, through the Eucharist, we're given the pledge of our inheritance to come in these earthen vessels. So it's important to talk about these things. Um, in this world, among the saints of God, we learn that the deification of the mind is still a kind of repentant mind, but it takes on a, a new form, a, a wondrous form. So again, St. Mark traces this for us. We move from an initial repentance, which includes our baptism, confession, coming back again and again to God, through a continual existential repentance where we practice the commandments of God as a continual attempt to acquire the mind of Christ. And it culminates in this um, perfected form, which is the repentance of the saints for their neighbor, the taking on, bearing one another's burdens, as St. Paul puts it, and so fulfilling the law of Christ. This is what a Christ-like mind looks like in this world. It is a mind that, as St. Paul says, would rather be accursed from Christ if it would save his brethren, his kinfolk, according to the flesh. It's the mind that St. Moses uh, prophetically uh, uh, shows us on the mountain when he stakes his life for the people of Israel and says, if you will forgive their sin, keep this people, my people, as the holy people, the chosen people. If not, blot me out with them. That's the deified mind at work. It's the, the mind of self-emptying love. And it's a mind where the thought of God is so all-consuming that... Um, it cries aloud like Paul, it is not, not, no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Um, this is not an annihilation of the specific mind of the deified, of the saints. It's the perfection of that mind, the elevation, but importantly deification of that mind such that now there's no thought, no will that's 
intention with the will of God. Uh, this is St. Maximus the Confessor tells us really that the, the whole of our ascetic life as Christians, the whole of our spiritual life is summed up in this, thy will be done, not my will, but thine be done. Uh, when that occurs, which is not an annihilation of our will, he was a very important defender that Christ himself has both a human and divine will because he redeems uh, our will, our mind, uh, and so on. It's an insistence that our destiny, our high calling, is to be such that we live with the life of God, we live with the will of God, that our life, our will, is by grace indistinguishable from the, the life of God. And St. John uh, uh, unfolds this mystery to us when he uh, shows us Christ's high priestly prayer in John 17, where Christ prays for this, for the disciples, that they may be one as we are one. Beautiful. Father, we, we thank you. We ask your blessing. And uh, thank you for edifying us with these magnificent thoughts. Forgive me. Patristic Nectar Publications presents The Holy Trinity, an 11 lecture series by the late Father Thomas Hopko, former professor of dogmatic theology and dean of St. Vladimir's Orthodox Theological Seminary. Revered for his zealous and forthright preaching, Father Hopko delivered these lectures in February 2001 to the clergy of the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of North America. Delving into the Orthodox Church's dogmatic teachings on God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, March 18, 2024 marks the ninth anniversary of Father Hopko's repose. May his memory be eternal. For these and other available titles, please visit our website at patristicnectar.org.